So as promised in my previous upload, I said I was gonna make this really awesome motion graphic in Blender and show you guys exactly how to do it. This is a very beginner friendly tutorial because we're doing some geometry node stuff, but very simple geometry node stuff. As you can see here, this is all we're really doing and then giving it to all of these little prongs. And like you can see here, it's just these little pointers that point wherever the Suzanne monkey head goes. It's so fun because it's so simple. Sometimes the simplest things often make for the funnest uh, little tutorials, especially if you're a beginner. So if you wanna learn how to do this, including these nice materials, I'm gonna show you how to do all of this, by the way. Um, so this is materials, lighting, animation, geometry nodes. Um, and when I'm done, I'll upload the final blend file to my Patreon. So those of you supporting the channel on there will get access. But if you're not a Patreon, you can still follow this with a free version of Blender and make this animation here. So let's jump in and I hope you guys enjoy. So let's start by opening up a new scene in Blender. And what we'll do is we'll go ahead and just select everything and press delete. Then we're gonna go shift alt. We're gonna go to our mesh options, just add in a plane. Then we're just gonna tab into edit mode and inside of edit mode, make sure the whole plane is selected. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna right click and go subdivide. And let's come here to the subdivide tab and let's give it seven subdivisions like so. There we go. And then what we're gonna do, we're gonna go back into object mode. And now what we'll do is we'll go Shift A, we've got our mesh options and in a UV sphere. Let's just come up here to our overlays. Let's just enable our wireframe. And the reason we're doing that, if we now select our sphere, we can go S to scale our sphere down like this. Let's go into our top of graphic view by pressing seven on another pad. And in our top of graphic view, let's bring it here to the bottom left corner, like so. Let's scale it down just a little bit more, something like this. We want to kind of in the center of this square here. And what we'll do, we'll tab into edit mode and we'll select the vertex at the top here and we'll go control plus or command plus a few times just to grow the selection about this much. And then we're gonna press E to extrude. We're gonna extrude it up and it should automatically go along the Z axis. If it doesn't, just press Z to lock it to the Z axis. We're gonna go up a little bit like so and click. Then we're gonna go E to extrude as to scale, just a little bit, um, maybe just a little bit more, maybe like that. And then we'll go E to extrude up and we'll just extrude it up and we'll go about this much like so. And then let's go E to extrude up again and click and then go S to scale. And we're gonna just make it pointy, so scale it nice and small. Then go Shift Alt, left click on this edge to loop select it and go Control B to create a bevel. Roll the middle mouse button just to add in some segments and click and then tab back out right click and go shade auto smooth. And what we can do now, S and scale it down just a little bit more maybe, then go control A again, just apply to scale, just to make sure. There we go, so that's about the right size. And then what we wanna do, and um, before we go duplicating it, let's just, just go over to our materials property and let's just go new and let's just call it a gradient, create a gradient material, we'll work on the materials later. And then we'll just go plus and go new, and let's just call it tip. And let's just tab into edit mode, and let's just select everything at the bottom like this. And click on gradient, make sure that's assigned. And we're gonna come to the surface here. And for now, let's just ignore that. We'll actually go down to the viewport display. Let's just make it any color, I'm gonna go with blue. And then click on the tip and make it whatever color you want. I'm gonna go with orange. And then for now, I'm just gonna make sure to select the top bits. I'm gonna click on the tip and assign that. And I'm gonna tab back out. Now we just have our placeholder materials. Don't worry about what they look like because we're gonna work on it later anyway. But we just have our placeholder materials here. And then what we're gonna do is we'll select this. And we're gonna go into our top view. And we're gonna go Shift D to duplicate in our top view. And we're gonna go X and move it over till it's in the middle of this cube here. Get it as close as you can by eye, and then just go Shift R to repeat that action. And you know, if it's a little bit off here at the end, don't worry about it, just move it in a little bit. We're not gonna be too worried about having it perfectly centered because it doesn't actually really matter. A little tiny, tiny bit of imperfection is fine here. I don't actually care too much. It actually just makes it look more interesting to me anyway. So you can just kind of roughly eye it if you want. There we go, so like something like that, and then just select them. Then go back into your top orthographic view and then go Shift D to duplicate and Y and move them along the Y till they're in the middle of the next cube and then click. Then go Shift R and keep doing that till it kind of just repeats. 
and we're going to just like I said move them like so if you want to you could just grab the cube or the, the, the plane here just turn it off in fact if you can't see the little um, deactivator here just come to the drop down click on this um, selectable option here now we can actually click with this plane selected we can see it's selected we can just click on that so we can't select it and then we can just select these guys and move them along the Y like so. So teaching you a few tricks here when it comes to disabling things. But just select them, just move them in place. It's not too bad anyway. The more or less where we want them to be. There we go. So just something like that. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go Shift A. We're gonna go to our mesh options. We're gonna add in a monkey head. And let's go to modifiers and give the monkey head a sub and go for subdivision surface. Right click and go shade smooth and then just go S to scale her down and G, Z, move it up. Control A and apply to scale. So something like this. And then come to your overlays drop down and let's just turn off the wireframe for now. There we have it. So we'll work on our scene more later but for now let's actually get to the geometry nodes. Really simple. So we're gonna go over into geo nodes. We're just gonna select any one of these prongs here and we're gonna to go to our modifiers. We're gonna add modifier and let's go add a geometry node system. Let's go new and let's call this look at, just for a name. So it's a look at system. So in the previous tutorial I uploaded my channel, we went into this, so I'll quickly show you again. It's really simple. We're gonna go shift A, we're gonna go search and we're gonna type in object info. There we go. And let's just make it relative. And then here in the viewport, we can just click on this little eyedropper and then hover over the monkey head and select it. And now you can see we have the Suzanne monkey head. And then let's go Shift D to duplicate, move it down. We want to also make sure this one's relative. And we want to actually reference the um, prong itself, the little arrow here. So we're going to go Shift A, search and get a self and get a self object. And then just plug that into here. So it's referencing itself. Very important. Then to get our vector, we wanna kind of subtract these two locations. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna go Shift A, search and get a vector and go for a vector math. Let's plug, oops, I got the wrong thing here. Then we're gonna go Shift A, search and get a vector. Let's go for a vector math. Let's change it to subtract and let's subtract the top location with the bottom location. This is going to allow us to have a vector. So if you now go shift a search and we get an align rotation to vector, we can then take that vector because we're looking at two points that gives us our vector and we can have that affect the rotation of this object. So we're going to take the object info rotation from the actual prong here that's pointing and plug it into here. And it should work on the Z by default because it's kind of where it's positioned. And then we're gonna go Shift A, search and get a geometry two, get a geometry two instance, place it on this cable. And then Shift A, search, and let's get a rotate, a rotate instance, rotate instances, plug it in here. And now we can take that rotation and rotate the instance. There we go. And now you can see this guy is now pointing to the monkey head. If I move the monkey head, you can see it points where that's going. So how do we make the others have that same thing? It's very simple. Let's go back to our layout. Let's go into our front view. Let's just click and drag over all of these prongs. Then holding in shift, grab the one that's kind of bent here that has the modifier. Then go control L and just go ahead, copy modifiers. And now all of them have that. And now you can see this is what we have. How cool is that? So now all we have to do is make this scene look beautiful. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna select our, um, we're gonna come here and select the top plane, turn it off so we can select it. Then we can select the plane, tab into edit mode, change this to face select. And with everything active on this plane, go control B to create a bevel. Make sure you roll the middle mouse button down so there's no segments. So it's just something like that, there we go. And click, and then go control I to inverse the selection. Go X and delete the faces. And then go A to select everything, go E to extrude and extrude it up a little bit like so. And now we have this grid. We'll tab back out. 
We're gonna go Shift A, we're gonna go to Mesh Options, add in a circle, scale that circle up, tab into Edit Mode, and let's just select all of this and press F to fill in the face, and then E, and let's extrude it down like so. And let's go X and delete that bottom face. And then we're just gonna go ahead and give this a bevel. So select this top face and go Control B to give it a slight bevel, roll the middle mouse button, there we go. Tab back out and then go to your modifiers and give it, oops, not a geometry nodes, but a subdivision. So search for subdivision surface. Then right click and go shade smooth. Then go shift A and go to your mesh options, add in a torus. Tab into edit mode and with everything active, press Alt S and scale it in along the normals to make it really skinny. And then S to scale it up, just so it kind of gets to the edge here, like that. There we go. Tab back out, right click and go shade smooth. And then give that a subdivision surface modifier. And by the way, there is a shortcut. You can just press control one or control two, but so I don't confuse anybody, I'll just add it manually. Okay, so now what we can do is we can go into our front view, we're gonna go shift A, we're gonna add in a camera and let's just move our camera back. You can press zero on your number pad to go into the camera view. And I'm just gonna change my transform pivot to 3D cursor. I'll double tap R so I can rotate around the 3D cursor and I'll just move my camera until I like sort of what position I'm in. I'm gonna go something like this. And what I'll do is I'll set that back to median point, but I'll bring the monkey head down and maybe off to the side like so. And we're gonna do a bit of animation. So we're gonna quickly come here to the timeline. Let's just change it to 100 frames. And then we're gonna to come to frame one and in frame one with the monkey selected, let's just double tap R to rotate it, make it look in a nice pose. We're gonna press I to insert a keyframe and you can see it turns yellow here. Then let's come to the frame 100 and we're also gonna press I again in the viewport. Now we've got the two holds at the end, so it's the same. And then let's enable auto keying and then let's come here to maybe like frame 25 and on frame 25, let's move the monkey head over to the side, maybe to the back. Then let's move to frame 50 and maybe move it forward here like this. And then maybe to frame 75. Maybe let's move it back here and then turn off auto keying. And now what we have is a sort of movement like this, just kind of going around like that. You can always enable auto keying again. And if it's in some places going too low, just move it up, that's all you have to do. You don't have to have it all be exactly the same, but you kind of get the idea here. Very simple and straightforward. We're just animating the monkey head, moving around like this. Now let's go Shift A, and our mesh options is just add in a plane and rotate it, scale it up. Now this bit's optional, but I just like to move a big plane into the background, just as a kind of like background plane. I'm also gonna grab my camera and under the Focal length, I'll change it to 90. That's just personal preference, just I'm in a little bit closer like that. There we go. And now we have everything set up. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over to our render engine, change it from EV to cycles. And then under the max samples, let's change it to 45. Then we're gonna go shift A, we're gonna go to our light options, add in an airy light. We're gonna go G, Z and move it up. And let's go to our light properties, give it a strength of 120 increase the size. And then if you want to, you can duplicate it by going Shift D. You can have two more kind of coming from the sides like this. But for now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into my shading workspace. I'm gonna go Z, I'm gonna go rendered. And I'm gonna select the monkey head. I'm gonna click new. And let's come in here to our materials. And we're gonna go Shift A, search and get a layer and get a layer weight. Let's plug the facing into the base color. And then let's go Shift A search and get a ramp and get a color ramp, place it on here. And then let's grab this value, make it light and make it red. Let's grab the end one, that handle, and let's make that bright green. And let's click to add another handle and let's make the middle one a nice saturated blue, like this. Then let's make it metallic and we can always leave the roughness as it is, but we got this nice sort of metal um, iridescent material that looks really nice. 
We're then gonna select one of our prongs and let's just go to a material, select a gradient. And we're gonna go shift a search and get a gradient, oops, gradient texture. There we go. We're gonna go shift a search and get a texture coordinate. So type it in, texture coordinate. Plug the generated into the vector and then go shift a search and get a mapping node. Place it on this cable like so. And now what we can do, we can take the Y and let's rotate it 90 degrees on the Y. And now we can take this gradient and plug it into the base color. And now you can see we have this gradient running along our prongs. All we have to do is go shift a search and get a ramp, get a color ramp, place it on here. And then let's drag these two values a little bit closer and let's change it to B spline. And now you can add whatever color you want. Um, this is completely up to you. So I'm not gonna say what you should do. Just try out whatever color scheme you like, but I'm gonna go with these two. And then I'm gonna go ahead and make it metallic and bring down the roughness a bit. But you kind of see what I'm doing here. Very, very sort of simple stuff. And then we're just gonna click on the tip. We're gonna make that metallic. Let's make it orange and bring down the roughness a bit. That's all. And there we have it. Now you can select all of these other objects in your scene, just give them materials, make them whatever you want. I might go with gray and I might make everything else that same material. It's really up to you what you wanna do. Even this ring here, you can select that, click new, make it metallic, maybe give it a color, bring down the roughness. You could really go with whatever you want to at, at this point, it really doesn't matter how you wanna do it. Um, but just having that looks really good. You could also um, work with your lighting a bit more at this point. So just duplicating your lights, moving them around. Lighting is very important when it comes to adding detail and life to your scene. Another thing you can do is go to your world settings. You can go to the surface here and under the color, you can change this to maybe a sky texture and then maybe bring the strength down to 0.2. There's all sorts of really cool things you could do. But for now, let's go ahead and just get a shot that we like. There we go. And let's go render and just render the image. And there we have it. If you wanted to render this out as an animation, all you'd have to do is go to your output properties, then go down to the output and select the destination on your computer. Then you can change the file format to FFmpeg video. And then under your encoder, you can change it to something like an MP4. And then you can go render and render your animation to your selected destination. Now it could take a while depending on your machine, but at 100 frames and no sort of weird materials, it should render pretty um, simply. So I'll see you guys next time. And as always, I will be uploading my original to my Patreon. You can find that in the description below if you wanna join that and support the channel. I'll see you guys next time.